What is up everyone? How are y'all doing? Welcome to the live stream um, on the new iPad today. So let me know how it sounds. Let me know how it looks. Um, I've got my notes on my phone, so I wanted to do this from the iPad. Um, trying a few different things with the live stream with the podcast. So you are tuning into the Cub Cooker podcast uh, where we talk about faith, spirituality and the paranormal every single day so welcome if you're an open-minded individual um, and you enjoy having really open honest conversations about those things then you're in the right place so um, you can find this over on the youtube channel where it will be uh, restreamed as well as on the podcast app at your convenience over at cub cooker uh, so today we're talking about uh, secrets of the ascended masters, um, and so we're talking about people like Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, different prophets, different um, leaders of the faiths, if you will. Um, and so I wanted to talk about that in uh, context with uh, where we're at in the world today, and what does it look like? What are some rules for us? Uh, rules not in dogmatic, uh, religious, or church, or uh, that type of rules, but rules as in uh, things that we can live by, things that we can hold in our heart. What are some rules of the Ascended Masters that uh, we can follow? And today I'm going to share several Bible verses that I think hold keys. I am not an expert at all in other spiritual texts. Um, and I wouldn't say that I'm an expert in the Bible, but I do read it a lot um, and I do study it. So that's where I'm going to be pulling a lot of my information from. Now, this can be cross applied to any faith, any uh, religion, any doctrine that you uh, personally hold or believe. So uh, this is not just for um, your, your Bible crowd. This is for anyone uh, interested in faith, spirituality, paranormal uh, and you're going to see why in a minute. And you're going to see why this is important uh, to encompass those three elements in a true faith, um, whatever that is. And a tr I, I use the word true uh, in the context of something that actually works, something that actually renders results in your life. So that's why I say true, um, because I don't know uh, absolute truth. I have it within. So I can access it, um, but I don't know it as in a knowledgeable way where I can share with you absolute truth 100% every single time. I can share with you my inner truth, and I can share with you what God has shown me. And that's all anyone can do, by the way. Anyone that shares with you any type of truth that's knowledge-based truth is coming from someone else's knowledge or experience or uh, higher realms experience at some point in time. So with that said, we're going to dive in today. Um, personal morals and ethics. That's not really what we're talking about today. I'm talking more about um, foundations for the new ascension or the new earth or the 5D consciousness or the ascended masters. And so uh, we hear that word kind of thrown around a lot on the internet right now, the ascended masters, the ascended masters. Uh, and what does that even mean? It's the masters of the faith. It's the leaders, uh, the gurus of the faiths, the faith traditions of the entire world. I'm watching a documentary now on the Native American um, uh, the evolution of the Native Americans and uh, the uh, moving of them and some of the horrible things that were done. Um, but they got into their spirituality and they got into a lot of um, their ascended masters and their spiritual practices. And so what I'm going to share today is really I think that we've gotten away from spiritual practice and we've gotten into religiosity, churchianity, uh, dogmatism, and a lot of big words there, and a lot of words that I made up. But um, so I, I wanted to. I came up with about seven what I consider foundations of the new ascended person, um, and I believe this is what all of these ascended masters were coming to tell us. Now I believe Christ is my Savior. I believe He is the way, the truth, and the life, um, and that I 
have tried to follow him at points in my life, but as I shared in a TikTok video earlier today, um, a lot of that following has been in vain because I haven't, until recently, gotten his message that we need to become him, not follow him, become him. Um, And that's part of what I want to share today. So as we get into the podcast today, like I said, let me know uh, if you guys can, uh, uh, if you guys can hear it. Um, Let's see. um, Okay, I thought I had some more questions. So um, 74 Leathercraft, what is up? Welcome. I hope you're having a, uh, a beautiful evening there. Raul, what is up? Um... So, getting into it, foundations for the new ascension. Um, what's up, seventy four Leathercraft? Um, hey, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, we gotta zap some people here. So, if you guys see anyone that's just hustling in the comments, do me a favor and put them on block. So, uh, I get really tired of that. I'm out here pouring my heart out, guys, and there's people on here that just want to see the world burn, and I hate that. Um, But anyway, uh, uh, I won't even say their name. I won't even say their name. Jesus came in the flesh 2,000 years ago. Amen. Um, Yeah, thank you. Um, So you guys knock them out of the knock them out of the chat. I can't. I can't do this. You know, the more I get of that, the more I'm just not even going to go live. I'm going to do these pre-recorded videos. So if you guys want to see me continue to go live um, and do these as a live podcast, just please help, you know, police and uh, kind of protect the, the comment section from people like that. So they're just throwing nonsense out there, you know, trying to uh, mess with people. So thank you guys for the roses. God bless you. I appreciate that. Um, and it throws me off, you know, I get in this, this rhythm and, uh, it would be like if you went to a church and there was a pastor on the stage and you started, uh, saying slanderous, uh, or, uh, defamating character things about them. Uh, and I'm just not going to stand for it. And this app shouldn't stand for it either. So thank you for your time. Fiery Opal says, I really appreciate that. Thank you for your encouragement. Um, So let me get into the lesson for today, because these are some things that really came to me. Um, And again, the more I do this, the more there's just spiritual warfare, I believe, guys, you know, uh, going on. So uh, Jesus is, God is, and us saying it, uh, it messes with their demons. Amen. Um, Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an Orthodox Christian painting of Christ. Um, I just picked it because I thought it was nice and traditional and nice and uh, ascended master-esque. So, uh, Kidda777, God bless you for uh, all of the roses. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys for the tips on here. That helps me do this. Uh, We have a Patreon, too, for anybody that wants to support us on there. Um, I do this full time. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the hearts. God bless you guys. Um, So, anytime, uh, you know, I get into this and then people drop in the comments. It's always people... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop for a second and talk about this because this is important. If we are to attempt to become ascended masters spiritually, one thing we have to deal with is, uh, you know, these, these clanging gongs of people out in the world. And I know Christ dealt with them. I mean, those are the people that literally took him to the cross. So um, I, I totally, totally don't feel like I'm just singled out. I know anyone trying to do this is going to get, uh, that kind of, um, that kind of shade thrown at them in the comments here. So, uh, but it's something we have to deal with. And, uh, so as someone who's seeking a higher spiritual realm, I do ask you guys to pray for me and I ask you guys to moderate the comments. Um, as we do these and, and we get more people on the live. That's just kind of a symptom of the more people you have, the more chance you have of pe- people like that being on here. So, uh, let's see, Jamaican priest says, uh, so quote, UFO activity is just sp- spiritual realm activity. Uh, I don't think it's spiritual realm activity. I think it's actual physical manifestations of heavenly realms here. Good and bad, by the way, the Bible talks a lot as well as other spiritual texts 
uh, about sons of God or angels or um, uh, ministers of the heavenly realms, whatever you want to call them, uh, having mechanisms, having uh, the ability to fly, having the ability to manifest in this realm. Some of the scripture I'm going to share today is exactly from that. So, uh, uh, so I'm a clinging symbol. I still cling to him. Um, uh, Let's see, uh, one side of his face uh, is God, one side is man, uh, that is the icon. Um, Judah the Orchard, no, I wasn't talking about you, I'm talking about somebody I kicked out of the chat here. By the way, Judah, uh, not you at all. So, uh, those who love him, he carried to the cross. Um, absolutely. Uh, yes, a Sefer is a great kid. I love the Sefer. Um, now, the Sefer is all kind of retranslated from a Hebrew point of view. Uh, and a lot of like New Testament is your Greek point of view. So uh, I do like that they did that, though. So the Sefer is very much like Hebrew roots influence, uh, which I don't have any problem with. I think it's very, very cool. Um, and for me, it helps a lot with my understanding. But I also think that Greek is really important. So I also read interlinear. Uh, Bible often and then I read other texts as well like I read Dead Sea Scrolls and I read um, the uh, Nagamati scriptures stuff like that so I try to get like a good understanding of everything that we're dealing with here sorry about the dogs across the street so let's see um, any other questions uh, you should read uh, Sarah from Rose I have not read that um, that sounds very interesting um, and I probably will. So I love good uh, book recommendations. So uh, hearing and singing uh, worship songs. What's up, Edge to Win Hell? Thank you for being here. Uh, have you looked into the ancient Sumerian? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to be reading some of those on here live as we go forward too. Um, I have a Sefer and a King James and an NIV in the New English. Awesome, awesome, Kitta. Um yeah, and I like the King, King James the more I study. I certainly don't agree with how it, you know, came into being. Um, and I think that it was probably, you know, somewhat manipulated or at least edited to, to give people what they wanted um, and needed. But uh, that's just my historical belief on that. So, again, that's take that with a grain of salt. But I do believe um, it has more of the truer meaning because... Uh, we didn't have English where it, you know, just kept, you know, changing the meaning. And now you get like translations like the message and stuff, which is good. I, I like the message too. But when you start looking at King James and then you'll look at, you know, the NIV, you see, oh, there's a bigger difference. Or you look at Christian Standard Bible. Oh, there's a pretty big difference. So um, even one today that I'm going to share as we get into this. Um, you know, was changed dramatically uh, from translation to translation. So uh, all of our Bibles are manipulated, absolutely. Uh, that's why we have to research them all to go back and forth. Amen. That's And that's exactly why I'm here doing this. That's exactly why I do this every day and dig into this stuff because uh, we're not getting that from the pulpits. We're not getting that from the doctrines and from the denominations. We are getting that filtration and that point of view. And so I'm here to give uh, my experience and my research and my data. Uh, again, take it with a grain of salt for whatever it is, but maybe it speaks to some of you guys. Uh, maybe it leads you on your journey. Maybe you want to join in the Book of Enoch study that we're doing. I'm taking a bit of a break from that tonight and sharing uh, some more just biblical stuff as we go. So, um, Let's see, uh, do you get a lot of stuff uh, going outside the idealist lines? I do. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ski uh, 1776. Uh, yes, I get a lot, uh, a lot of uh, CRAP uh, going outside of these doctrinal lines and kind of the coloring book we've been given. Um, and in fact, I'm going to change the background here because... I kind of did that background just to get um, get some attention and kind of talk about what we're talking about. So the background I want to use is a little bit trippier. I like those. Um, so this one, I typed in um, the kingdom within on an AI. So this is AI artwork. 
Um, and I love using AI artwork because it's it's very dynamic and it's very it's breathtaking. And uh, this one just represents to me, you know, the kingdom within, which we're going to talk about tonight. So, um, so let's see. Um, I seen a video of a guy who walked up to folks at the gas pump and offered to fill up uh, for one Bible verse and almost no one could do it. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I've been confronted with the devil or Lucifer in my dreams and crying out to Jesus. Uh, well, prayers for you, prayers for you. Um, I too have had vivid, vivid dreams uh, recently and in the past. Um, and I used to have uh, very demonic dreams that I felt like I would never get out of. And I finally walked away from my old life. Um, and then God stripped away parts of my old life. And here I am doing this full time, talking to an iPad on my porch at seven o'clock at night, uh, dealing with, you know, haters still in the comments. So uh, it, nobody right now, but, um, uh, you know, so uh, universe called your friendly little devil here, AKA Jesus Christ. We are all Christ's if we choose to be. Uh, so welcome, welcome here. Uh, I struggled to say his name, uh, but I said his name. Uh, the universe called so proud of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate everyone in this community. I have met so many people in this community with different mindsets, different ideas. Uh, one of my new friends on here, Sons of God Ministries, talking about uh, Yahweh versus El Elyon in the Bible and that there's two voices in the Old Testament. I think there's a lot of meaning behind that, and I think there's a lot to unpack. I will talk about that more later when I can dig into it. I'm currently going through now, looking at the verses that are spoken from Yahweh and looking at the verses that are spoken from El Elyon. It's very obvious to me at this point in time, until I prove myself wrong, uh, that there are two voices in the Old Testament, that there are two separate God entities talking. Uh, one of the things I want to get into um, is talking about uh, things like Book of Enoch, the weird scriptures in the Bible, and why those are super important to our modern faith. So, uh, let's see. Uh, is it the same guy that gives $20 for one in the grocery store? Uh, most don't know. Uh, yeah, Jacob, or 74 Leathercraft, I'm pretty sure it is the same guy. I've seen some of those TikTok videos, so... Um, but yeah, like nobody can figure out even one scripture and it's crazy that we've, people go to church all the time, but we don't even know our scriptures. And then people that do know the scripture just use them against people. And that's so sad. And that's what I, I'm here to hopefully help, hopefully fix that. Hopefully open some hearts and minds. I am not perfect by any means, but I am a Christ. I am following him. I am becoming him. And that's what I hope for all of us here um, is that we can become ascended masters um, after our masters. So my vocal cords were paralyzed, but I forgot to say his name, Jesus. Dude, I've had the same similar dreams where I can't even speak the name of Christ. I can't even speak the name of Jesus because there is like a demonic hold on that. And um, I think when we have those dreams, it's really important to uh, remember that those are spiritual realms happening. We enter spiritual realms in our dreams. Dreams are not just random firings of neurons. We are entering the quantum realm. We are entering uh, the realm between realms. And so those experiences in our dreams are often not just random neurons firing. Sometimes they're actually something we need to pray against in our waking life. We need to pray for in our waking life. Sometimes there's something telling us, pray for this. Stop it before it happens. Not today. And so I think that's important when we have those dreams, especially when they're vivid. I had one the other night, a very negative one about myself, about myself potentially being ill uh, in, a, in ways that I don't want to be ill. Um, and I've been praying against it ever since, and I've felt a lot more peace about it, and I've been feeling better. Um, and so uh, was it just a random firing of neurons, or was there an entity bringing me a message to tell me to pray against this, pray for it, pray for the protection. Uh, and so I would say always err on the side of caution. Uh, don't worry or fear in anything, but in all things pray. Uh, and I think that's really important. So uh, the devil tried to force me to open portals, but I jumped dimensions in a dream. 
That's interesting, Mandy. Uh, that is very interesting. Portals are really, really interesting to me um, lately. So um, let's see. Um, uh, it's a mix of both your valid and your feelings. Um, and uh, you are worthy. Thank you. Um, we are all worthy. We are all worthy by him uh, who came. He came in the flesh. And, and we, we've deified Jesus in a way. Uh, and that's one thing I want to talk about today. We've deified Jesus. We've deified other spiritual gurus who have come on the earth rather than listening to what they actually said. And everything that I gather from what they actually said. Here's what bothers me about the book of Acts. Here's what bothers me about Corinthians and Ephesians and any of the Pauline texts, any of uh, the epistles of Paul, um, is it is creating a new law, is the way I see it. It's creating a new doctrine and a dogma and a law, rather than looking at what Christ actually said. And that's where I have a problem, because the scriptures we have of what Christ said, we have a lot. We have more than what's just in the canonized Bible. We have the Nag Hammadi scriptures, um, for one, and then um, there's, there's other different types of texts that talk about him with other religions. So we can look at all of those and try to at least decipher who he really was, what he really came to say, and who he really wants us to be. And so that's what I'm interested in as we kind of go down this path. And today may be more of a intro to the foundations of ascension rather than me going through line by line uh, because we've got a lot of questions on here. So um, let's see. Um, so the universe called. I never understand what you're saying. I'm sorry. You go back and forth. Um, I try to follow you, but I don't quite understand what you're saying. So, uh, we'll pray for your broken heart. Thank you, Kitta. I appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate you universe called, but I don't understand, uh, the back and forth. Um, it doesn't quite make sense to me. It's not always in full sentences and, um, maybe I'm just not elevated enough to understand it, but, um, but anyway, bless you anyway. So, um, Okay, so I do want to read a little bit of scripture here. Um, this is from Luke 6, 40, and then 46. Now here's where I think this is important, and I think I'll just stay with this one verse today. Because, again, I have seven, so that could easily be seven live streams rather than try to do them all today. Because there's enough to talk about in this. And I wrote, we are on the path to ascension. So Luke 6, 40 and 46 in the King James Version, uh, verse 40 says, The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. So how can we be perfect? We go into spirit. That's the only way we can be perfect. We go into spirit. The church will tell you, you go through Christ. You have to, you know, it's the blood and the shedding and the, uh, and the whole... And while I believe that he came and he uh, was unalive for us, I believe it was for a different mechanism than we've been told. And I'll get into that in a whole nother chapter and verse and live stream. But for now, um, how do we be perfect? We do what he did, which was go into spirit and go directly to God. And that's what I believe he came to share. So 46 says, And why do you call me Lord, Lord? And not do the things which I say. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, or Master, Master, and not do the things which I say? And so if we're to do the things which he say, then we have to look at the words he said. Well, you have books like Acts and Ephesians and Romans and all of these things that are setting up dogmas, setting up processes, setting up methodology and religiosity and churchianity and all these things. And we're not looking to source we're not looking to what christ actually said or what we have of what he actually said so um by knowing you are imperfect and unique absolutely uh it's self-reflection uh of triggers to find trauma um i don't know about the whole trauma thing a lot of people talk about oh find trauma find trauma um and i don't know about that i just don't think that that's the meaning of life uh and that's for me personally um, I know there's like a whole documentary, The Deep End, 
uh, on Hulu right now um, about a spiritual leader, and I can't even remember her name now, but she does a lot of like trauma recovering. Um, and while I think that can be helpful to some people, I don't know that we all need that. I think some of us need to just continue to ascend. Um, and sometimes that trauma needs to stay in the past. So, uh, I think we need to be honest about it. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, I don't know that reliving it over and over and over is helpful at all. So, um, uh, you're right in how you think and understand and speak, uh, your truth. Uh, we'll figure out how to explain. Um, very good, very good. Uh, well, thank you. It's part of the ascension process. Um, yes, I would, I would definitely say that. Um, and, and I've done that too. I've had plenty of trauma in my life. So I've had to go back and uh, look into it and forgive myself and others um, and forgive God and forgive the universe or whatever. You know, uh, I think there's plenty we can all do with that. But a lot of these people that practice the kind of repetitive over and over and over reliving trauma, I just don't, I don't find a lot of value in that for myself. So um, anyway, so, but verse 46, I think is a, is a huge key. Why do you call me Lord, Lord or master, master and not do the things which I say? So if we're to actually look at the things which he says, one of them and I will jump to this verse because this is super, super important, I think. And this is the last one. So I'll probably talk about this one on every live stream that I do within this topic. In this one, I put, we manifest the kingdom within us. We are not manifesting a future hope. We're not manifesting some construct in, in the past, present, or future. We manifest the kingdom within us. And here's how I know that. Luke 17, 20 through 21 in the King James Version. He answered them. This is the Pharisees asking Jesus, like, hey, when will the kingdom of God come? Uh, and Jesus says, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, meaning there's no signs of its coming. Neither shall they say, look, here it is, or oh, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. I'm going to look right in the camera when I say that. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And to me, that is one of the most important things that we have absolutely cut out of, edited out, whitewashed, whatever you want to call it, out of our faiths and religions. The kingdom of God is within us. And if we would realize that more often, uh, we would, well, we would live our lives differently. And I think that's a big point of what I'm trying to make around this whole topic is um, if we are to create a new, a new earth, if we are to create uh, new us, new selves, new relationships, new opportunities, you hear all this stuff about manifesting. Where does that come from? Everybody's looking outside of them. They're looking at the field to manifest. I look within, I say the kingdom of God is within me. It's like a seed that I plant every time I have a conversation, every time we do this, every time I seek deeper and try to find, every time I try to become better, every time I learn and grow step by step every day, and every time I become more like a child in my faith and understand that the world and the universe is full of wonder and opportunity and overflow, that's where I believe the manifesting of God's kingdom comes from. So. Let's take a few comments here. Uh, believers are filled with the Holy Spirit. God is within us. Amen. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, I have to go clean my house. I'm sad to go. Uh, maybe uh, you'll keep doing live stream. Thank you, Kidda. Um, this will be reposted over on YouTube. Uh, so you can go check it out over there. You don't have to. Uh, catch me on live all the time. You can rewatch them over there every single day. I post them. So um, let's see. Uh, universe called. What do you mean? Um, let's see. Ryan Marshall. What is up? Welcome. So anyway, before I end uh, and we get too sidetracked on different things, I wanted to tell you guys, first off, I love you. Second off, thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. Uh, and then third off, the kingdom is within you. Stop looking outside of you. And if you follow Christ, do what he says. 
stop looking to books like Acts and Romans and all of this stuff and the church and the dogma and start looking at what Christ said. That's all I'm saying. That's for me what I'm doing. And I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what I'm doing. And that's what I'm doing. And I hope you guys find some renewed source within you through that message. Because I believe you will. I believe that's what Christ came to share. And I believe there were other ascended masters that came to share similar messages. But I believe Christ was the fullness of God. The full ascended master. He was crucified, transfigured, and he rose again in that transfiguration. And to come and show us what we really are. We were created in spirit in the garden to walk with God. And then we ate the apple and we became the flesh. And then the angelic realms came down and they defiled our flesh. They created new creations. We've been deceived since the beginning of time, I believe. And it's time that we wake up. It's time that the new earth be born. It's time that we become the church, the true church. Not the construct we've had for the last thousand years but the new church. We are the church. And I love you guys. The kingdom is within. Um, uh, it's going to be so beautiful. Amen. I will say that. Um, do you believe Jesus is God in the flesh? I believe he was the fullness of God in the flesh. Absolutely. Um, and I believe that he was the full ascended master. I believe God had come in the flesh many times before that and interacted with the flesh, but I believe he was the fullness of God in the flesh, the fullness of God, that full ascended master. I believe he was crucified, and then that sacrifice repaired our DNA so we can go straight to God again. That's what I believe. So uh, the church isn't a building. Praise God. Amen. Kidda, thank you for being here. Uh, Audrey says amen. So your body is your church. Um, amen. Amen. Your body is a church. We are the temple. We are the temple, guys. So 1 John 5, 18. Amen. Uh, so anyway, I love you guys. I'm going to jump off, but please, please know uh, that you guys, you guys are awesome. You guys are a beautiful community. I'm Cub Cooker. Thank you for being here. Uh, I don't know anything. I'm just here to talk about it and explore it with you guys, share what I've learned, share what God's doing in my life. Uh, I talk about faith spirituality and the paranormal every single day right here i'm going to talk about paranormal tomorrow talk about some of the weird stuff in the bible if it's weird it's important so don't miss it uh i'll be here live tomorrow kidda god bless you for all the roses seriously thank you thank you thank you cannot thank you enough uh you guys that tip on here you guys that have joined the patreon uh, I'm dropping videos on Patreon, too, that are exclusively for that community. It's only $3 a month to support me over there. Um, and, again, I do this full time, so thank you, guys. I love you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Be, be the master. Be the ascended master. Let Christ actually reign in you. Let's stop following doctrine and dogma and start following what he actually said. Love you guys. Peace.